Hello everyone. Hello, hello. You are on the Hellers, Propellers channel and today our blog about Israel and the topic of our video today will be stereotypes about Israel. There are a lot of stereotypes about Israel, as well as about any country in principle. There are a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation, but some things, of course, are true. Since we often travel and communicate with people from different countries, we hear such stereotypes repeatedly and each time we try to convey how the situation in Israel really is. And today, with our video, we want to voice some of these stereotypes in the words of our acquaintances and friends abroad. And to confirm something, and, accordingly, to refute something. Let's go. From your American audience. Is it true that only Jews live in Israel? Thanks to my American girlfriend for a wonderful topical question. And here I want to disappoint or please everyone a little bit, of course. No, there are not only Jews living in Israel. Finally, 2000 of the 22nd year, the number of inhabitants in Israel was 9,600,000, a little more within these limits. Of these, there are only 7,100,000 Jews. Yes, this is the vast majority, but not all residents. 2,100,000 inhabitants are Arabs. Moreover, both Muslim Arabs and Christian Arabs. They are all actions taken into account. And a little more than half a million people are Christians or people who have not decided on their religious affiliation. Listen, I'm like a brother asking you. What's there? Is there only mountains and desert in Israel? Thank you for such a wonderful question to our Georgian friend. In fact, in Israel, deserts occupy only 40% of the entire area of the country. We have three deserts, the Negev, the Arabian Desert and the Judean Desert. As you can see, this is even less than half the area of the country. Moreover, there are many beautiful mountains and gorgeous forests in the north of our country. Of course, most of them are planted manually, but at the same time, if you fly over Israel, you will see that there are a lot of green areas in the country. We don't live in a desert, we don't live in rocks, we live in a beautiful country. And only 20% of Israel's population actually lives in the desert. I hope this stereotype will be refuted. Ciao Rogazzi from Milan. I really like to eat pizza, pasta. Oh, Mia's mom. Is it true that only kosher food is eaten in Israel? Ciao Julia. No, of course we don't only eat kosher food. Since the population consists of Jews, Muslims, Christians, representatives of various other faiths, we have no obligation that everyone eats only kosher. Observing the purse is a personal matter for everyone who lives in Israel. You can find here for yourself both kosher stores that sell kosher food and, accordingly, have a permission from the rabbinate, and non-kosher stores Russian or Arabic, Moldovan, Ukrainian, where you can buy absolutely everything from sava and pork to cheese and meat. In addition, restaurants also, there are restaurants that observe kashrut and work according to the laws of kashrut. There are restaurants where you can absolutely safely eat a hamburger with cheese. Therefore, everyone who wants to, finds for himself the food that he is used to eating. Including pizza and pasta. I personally know two excellent restaurants in which there is one pizzeria, that's the truth, believe me, Pizza is in no way inferior to Neapolitan. And in the second, there was nothing to cook such pasta for. I always, honestly, I even take a supplement.
so I have something to ask. I heard Aunt Petia, Aunt, and said, you have a little, a little bit of everything there is expensive. If I wanted to buy a small apartment, what is not even enough for the kitchen? Thank you for this question, our dear Odessa citizen. Indeed, I have to agree here. In order to buy a house in Israel, you need to have a very large amount of money. Naturally, we have mortgages, so-called mortgages, but the first payment should be at least 30%, although today there are several government programs in which the first payment may be a little less. But, realizing that we have very little land and a lot of people, the real estate market, unfortunately, is not falling in price and is only growing. Therefore, not everyone has their own housing. A large number of Israelis live in rented housing, including us too. Is this a problem? Probably, yes. Does it knock us out of life, does it make our life worse? No. We rent the housing that we want, for which we have earned, and we, in principle, like the apartment in which we live. But this problem exists, indeed, housing is expensive in Israel. Here I agree with you, dear friend. Greetings from Japan. Hi, there. We in Japan honor traditions very much. Is it true that in Israel, women should only wear long clothes, and men should wear kippahs? Thanks for the question, Chio Chio himself is from the land of the rising sun. Of course, we are, just like with kashrut, national clothes, or long clothes. The form of clothing for everyone is the one in which he is comfortable. Of course, if a person observes all religious requirements and postulates, he wears the clothes that are recommended for Jews, in this case, the Torah. If this person does not comply, then of course the form of clothing and types of clothing, what is convenient for him. You can always meet here, even on the beach, a beautiful beautiful girl in a bikini with a vending machine, because this is Israel, baby. Wearing a kippah for a man is also not mandatory, but for myself, for example, I have very clearly defined when I am near the wailing wall or when I go to the synagogue and put on a type. But I don't wear it every day and absolutely and a lot of friends do the same. There are moments when we dress, there are moments when we don't. There are people who do not wear bales at all, and accordingly, no one forces them, neither Christians, nor Catholics, nor Arabs, no one forces these bales to wear. Everyone as he sees fit. Is it true that there is a constant war going on in Israel and terrorist attacks are constantly being committed? This is probably one of the most important questions that people ask us most often when we are abroad, or is it something that many are afraid of before coming to Israel? In fact, the last war in Israel was the Second Lebanese War, but in the year 2006. Of course, over the years, rockets have come to us very often. And, let's say, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, yes, there was quite a massive shelling of Israel from the Azov side, and when more than 1,000 rockets were fired. And even personally, we were hiding in a home bomb shelter, and somewhere 300 meters away from us, one rocket exploded and did not have time to grab the Iron Dome. Such situations happen, but life goes on. No one at this moment covers his head, sprinkles it with ashes, and does not sit at home all day. It's probably strange, but Israelis continue to live an ordinary life. As for the terrorist attacks, last year was, unfortunately, too fruitful for terrorist attacks. Almost 7,400 terrorist attacks were committed on the territory of Israel, more than 30 people were killed. More than 700 were injured. And this really worries us, but personally we are even a little more than a potential war. Because when the enemy is out there, you know it's the enemy.
And when this enemy is among you, in an ordinary person, I don't know, standing with you at the bus stop, riding with you in a minibus or standing in line at the supermarket, it's much scarier. Therefore, we try to be vigilant and, let's say, we accept all some security methods that are used in Israel absolutely correctly and treat them very correctly. And anyway, Israel is a very safe island, no matter what. Ben Gurion Airport is considered one of the safest in the world. Yes, this is due to the fact that the security service is always on the alert and thank them very much for this. But, as I have already said, we continue to live here. And I really hope that there will still be peace on this earth and not terrorist attacks unwittingly and will be able to spoil the life of a cheerful, very kind, and hardworking salsa. Bonjour. We are all madam. I have one question. Tell me, is it true that everything in Israel is only according to the Jewish calendar? As for the calendar, how do we live here, what calendar do we use, how do we not get confused about all these dates and holidays? And the answer is actually very simple. Firstly, all, indeed all religious holidays are tied to the Jewish calendar and therefore their date is always slightly floating during the calendar year, because the Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar and the month changes according to the lunar calendar. And here we have slightly floating dates. For example, the Israeli New Year may be in early September, next year may be at the end, then in mid-September. But again, this is due to the fact that we are tied to the lunar calendar. Some public holidays are also linked, such as the Independence Day of the EMA and the Crown to the Jewish calendar and therefore, respectively, have floating dates. International holidays, well, the 8th of March, which celebrates, yes, Valentine's Day, which is responsible, well, probably less actively, is naturally celebrated according to the international calendar as it is all over the planet. With days and weeks in Israel, everything is much easier. Our working week starts on Sunday and in Hebrew this day sounds like it's come, the first day. Every next day is called very simply. Day 2 is Monday, day 3 is Tuesday, and so on, and so on, and so on. And thanks to the fact that we have two calendars, each person has two dates of birth. one according to the international calendar and the second according to the Jewish calendar. This is a very wonderful occasion to celebrate your birthday twice a year. And everyone's favorite song unfortunately, a birthday only once a year loses its relevance. Is it true that all Israelis love their country and are its most ardent patriots? The question of patriotism is really correct. And I have rarely met in other countries as many patriots of the motherland as there are in Israel. And, probably, this is primarily due to the fact that, uh, firstly, people come to Israel most often at the call of the soul and heart. Everyone may have different reasons, but Israel is a special country. Honestly, it's impossible not to love her. Secondly, almost all residents of Israel, those who were born here or arrived young enough, served in the army of the Israel Defense Forces, Sakhalin. And this also leaves a certain imprint on the attitude towards the country in which you live. If you have been protecting it from possible attacks for two or three years, and there are many of them here. Therefore, indeed, I believe that the Israelis are great patriots. Very soon Israel will celebrate Independence Day, and we will try to shoot for you a story about how it happens in our country. But already today many cars are decorated with flags, a lot of.